Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm Jeannie Fisher, a Senior 401k Advisor with RD Investment Services and a Certified Financial Planner. For those of you on the Southeastern Seaboard, you're in our thoughts and prayers today, but for the rest of us, we uh, it's a regular working Thursday, so we're gonna get right down to business. Today, we are going to crash through the top five signs that your 401k plan is aging. For those of you who want more details, you can find a full article on my LinkedIn profile or in the HR Professionals magazine. But for the rest of us, we're gonna hit this pretty quickly because we like video form and we want the high points. So, sign number five, you are still accepting paper forms, whether it be an enrollment form, a beneficiary change form, a loan or a distribution form, all of those processes we recommend you move online. It will be easier on you, easier on the participant, and it will reduce the chance of human error. Sign number four, when you look at your investment lineup inside your 401k, it is primarily composed of actively managed funds. Now, I tell people this all the time. How you make investment decisions as a fiduciary is a wholly different process than how you make investment decisions on your own individual accounts. As a fiduciary, your number one goal is to provide an efficient fund lineup with all of the necessary asset classes represented. And then you are to regularly monitor that fund lineup against a benchmark and its peers. Now an index fund or a passively managed fund is specifically designed to track a benchmark or to track an index. And we are seeing a definite trend in our industry towards these lower costing, more efficient, and yes, maybe a little bit more predictable index funds. Now I'm a firm believer that the whole lineup doesn't have to be index funds. I like providing options. However, if you look at your lineup and it is primarily active funds and there aren't really many or any index funds offered, then you are potentially leaving a pretty big investing void for your participants. Sign number three, your HR department is manually printing and distributing all of the participant disclosures. This is the first question I tend to ask on site. How are you administratively handling these things? And I always tell people that you've been complaining about it loud and clear. It's a huge pain for you. The record keepers and platforms heard you. Almost all of them offer some fulfillment services with enrollment kits and notices. Now, if you have emails on file, they will probably be doing that for free for you. If you don't and they have to physically send something in the mail, there may be a minor surcharge, but I can promise you nine times out of 10, it will be more efficient for you to pay that small surcharge than for you and your HR team to sit in a circle, licking envelopes, stuffing envelopes, and then sending them out through the mail. So offload that administrative burden to your record keeper and your platform. And believe it or not, it's probably on your plan. You just need to elect it. Sign number two. You have retail share classes in your investment lineup. This sounds crazy, bear with me. I always compare this to buying toilet paper. You do not go out and buy one roll of toilet paper. You buy a whole box of toilet paper because you understand the value of buying in bulk and that you get things at a discount. That is exactly what the 401k industry does for investing. We pull all of the participant assets together so that we can qualify for lower cost administration and investments. Now. People don't realize that you can have a mutual fund with the exact same fund manager and the exact same strategy and have a whole smorgasbord of share classes. And each share class will have a different cost. I liken it to flying on an airplane. So I and another person can get on an airplane in Nashville we can fly to New York, uh, we'll get there at the same time, we'll experience the same turbulence. Um, if the plane crashes, we're gonna crash together. Uh, we're basically all on the same flight. But I can pay for a first class ticket and they can pay for a coach ticket. So what I tell people all the time is, is you have to be aware that your fund lineup may qualify for lower costing share classes that are the exact same strategy. An easy way to spot this, it's not the only way, but the easiest way for me to spot this is to actually take a look at your investment lineup. After the mutual funds name, if you see the letter A, boom. First sign that you're probably in a more expensive share class and you may qualify for a lower costing one. And I always tell people, it's going to be really hard to defend yourself as a fiduciary if you can have the exact same investment strategy and qualify for a group discount and you don't elect that. So always keeping an eye out for what we call those retail share classes. And then sign number one, this one's so near and dear to my heart, it hurts me every time. Uh, if, if I find a 401k that does not offer Roth deferrals, I'm absolutely floored. 
floor. So everybody knows the pre-tax deferral. You save into the plan today, you get the tax deduction today, the money grows tax deferred, and when you retire and you go to take it out, you take the money out and you pay taxes on it, okay? We're just doing it down the road. The Roth option is different in that you don't take the tax deduction today. You give that up, okay? But you're gonna save the money and it's gonna grow tax deferred and you will take the money out tax-free, including the growth, which like our industry is notorious for underestimating the value of that growth. So what we tell our participants all the time is the younger you are, the more beneficial the Roth can be because you have so much longer for that money to grow tax-free. Even if we want to throw in the conversation of what we anticipate tax rates to be, to overcome 40 years of tax-free growth is a hard job for an increasing tax rate to do. Adding the Roth deferrals to your plan is virtually free. All we have to do is get a payroll code set up. You might have to pay an amendment fee to your document, but that is one change that we can put into the plan today that is going to benefit a large, large, large number of your employees. And then you just need an advisory firm that can come on site and explain the benefit. So again, to recap the top five signs, you're still taking paper. That's a sign that your plan is aging. Number four, your investment lineup is primarily active funds. Number three, your HR department is still distributing all of the notices for you. Number two, you have retail share classes and you're not taking advantage of the lower costing institutional funds. And then finally, you do not offer a Roth deferral. So if you're an HR professional or you're an administrator and you want more information, look us up on argy.net or shoot me an email at jeanniefisher at argy.net. If you're an investment advisor, I'm curious what you look for. What red flags do you see in plans? How can you tell that a plan is a little bit behind the times or maybe hasn't been reviewed lately? Go ahead, do me a favor, sound off in the comments below and we'll get the conversation started. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day.